right guys we're going to do all kinds of fun reflections with this one wrapped candy and ribbon candy in a glass ball for an ornament i think that's a pretty cool thing for a saturday let's get started hello and welcome to deliberately creative i'm stephanie and this is day 19 of my 31 days doing holiday and winter designs. They're all being done in glass balls. They were all originally drawn on my marathon back on November 30th. So if you're interested in seeing these being drawn, check out that. There's going to be a link up here in the iCard. There's a link down below in the more information. All of the individual drawings on the marathon have been timestamped, and there is a flip through at the end of the video, and that's timestamped also. So you can take a look and see which ones you want to try. Welcome, Kung Fu Panda Songs. You like my drawing? Excellent. Welcome, Debbie. Hi, Val. Snowy good morning from Alaska. Yeah, there's a snowy good morning and good day going on all around the world right now, isn't there? We just have rain where I am, but uh, yeah, so this is going to be fun. If you're interested in the designs, I did do a downloadable. It is linked in the chat. It's linked down below and it'll be linked up above. This is available on Teespring. It's very inexpensive, all 31 designs. And if you don't have a printer to print this out, sorry, Ugh, I thought I was organized. I do have a coloring book that has been set up so that you can order it from Amazon. You might, if you're prime, you might be able to get it by Christmas if you ordered today, but I'm not sure. So uh, we will be talking more about stuff. I did get my second set of tags done and put up on the website. This is the first set and on to Teespring. My second set, I'm going to have to wait till Mark comes back in the house because it's sitting in the living room right now. <laughs> Not right here. So thank you very much. Kung Fu Panda Songs asks, what is my favorite color? My favorite color? Mm, I think that it's got to be a really, really rich jewel tone. So some type of jewel tone. And I'm not sure what that package is that you're holding, but sitting out alongside, there's my um, second set of tags printed on cardstock. I'm letting Mark know. So jewel tones and things like that. Thank you, Kung Fu Panda. Um, so now we're going to keep the talk about art stuff. Oh, here it is. The second set of tags. Go ahead. The second set of tags here is the next nine days of my artwork. This little penguin was done last night. So that's how new you know this is. But I love these. And you get it two different ways as ornaments, tags, or as square rectangle tags. So if you're interested and you want to make a purchase or if you were thinking about uh, doing a super chat, I'd rather you click the link in the chat and buy something so that you have a physical product. You have a downloadable product that you can print off as many times as you want. And I get more of the profit from it from Teespring than I do from a super chat. Just saying. All right, we're gonna get started here and go with, let's see here. Go with the top down. There we go. Yeah, the penguin is really cute. It, it makes me very, very happy. I think we are going to start off. Whoa, I've got uh, the autofocus is still on, but I want to zoom in a little more. Let's get that nice and big so we can really see it. We're not going to work on the background till the end because I'm not sure what kind of a background I want. Good morning, Catherine. Thank you for being here. And so now Kung Fu Panda, I love that you're here and that you're asking questions. If you want to keep your questions to art stuff, that would be really, really handy because I am trying to 
keep this focused on art. We're going to do the ribbon candy first, and I'm going to go to, I went to Google and just typed in ribbon candy. And when I typed in ribbon candy, whoa, look at that all of these different kinds of ribbon candy. And since I'm not painting any one specific thing, I just wanted to see sort of how light and color work on ribbon candy. So I just went in and did a lovely little search. And I know that my ribbon candy, I'm seeing it from the edge. So kind of, I mean, this is ribbon that's just sort of folded like ribbon candy, but I'm seeing it kind of from that edge, but I want ribbon candy. So let's, let's go and just sort of look about. Hmm. So this one right here, that gives us that, that edge, you see that sort of shine and stuff like that. I think that's kind of what I'm looking for, for my ribbon candy. See how we're going to go from that edge like that? So I think that's what I'm going to look at. I want to open. Now this is actually on, that particular picture is actually on a um, stock photo site. So I'm not going to paint their thing exactly. I'm just using it as a reference for light. I'm going to use my own colors. But I do want to open that in a new tab. Pull that tab Pull that tab out so I can see it. Yeah, it didn't didn't open the way I wanted it to. Oh well. I've got an idea. <laughs> so right now, I am going to be fairly detailed on this candy. And the ribbon candy, I'm going to go in. I think it's going to be in that... Um, there's going to be a lot of white on it, but the white is going to go kind of pinkish maybe. So I just want to be careful. And I think I'm going to do it with smaller brushes just because. So I've got a number two round. This is the Mimic Synthetic. I think I'm going to grab a fresh piece of paper towel. This one I've used for like uh, several, several days. It's still slightly damp from last night, I think. Interesting. See, you don't have to throw away the paper towel the first time you use it. It can, it can continue, that kitchen, kitchen paper can continue being used for quite a while. So I think I am going to do this with green and red. I think the main center stripe is going to be a bright green. So let's go and just grab that bright green. Oh yeah, that's a nice green. And I'm going to make the center stripe on this candy. Now, if you aren't careful when you put your colors on, you could end up with very muddy, muddy looking candy. And we don't want muddy looking candy. We want it to be nice and bright and happy. I am all for the nice, bright, and happy. But first, first layer, just putting it in where I see the color in my mind. You know, it's not... Yeah, let's, let's go back there. So there we go. Yeah, this light green is a really pretty color. This sort of, as you, as you put more layers of color in, it starts to get shape. So thinking about down in the dip right here, there's less light, so it's gonna be more shadowed. Up here on the top, it's going to maybe have a little tiny bit of a shadow going to the back edge, but not too much. And I am just putting the color in softly and gently. There we go. Maybe put even a hint of that color inside there. 
just to darken it up a little bit. There. All right. I am going to make the outside edge of this be the red color, and then that little stripe is going to be white between the layers of colors. I think that works out really well. So hello, Kristen and Mary and Debbie, and thank you so much, guys. I am really happy that you're here. If you can share this art, uh, share this video with your friends, share the the channel with your friends, that would be really helpful. We're working on getting to that 100,000 slowly, <laughs> slowly, slowly going to get there, maybe quicker. You know, it's amazing, but there are channels that they'll get 10,000 subscribers in one day. But I want to make sure that, you know, subscribers that join this channel, they're here because they really want to be here and want to learn how to do art. I'm going to say that there's a little tiny corner of that darker green right under there. Building this in layers. So this piece of candy is behind these wrapped, wrapped pieces. Oh, the soft, peaceful music in the background. Because of the way I run my, my broadcast, I have a, um, I have a loop of just soft, peaceful music off of the YouTube um, audio, the audio files on YouTube that you can use on your, for uh, royalty free, you don't have, and no attribution needed. So yeah, I just recorded it as a loop and put it on there. So it's just nice and peaceful. And I figure by keeping it sort of generic, just soft and peaceful and calming. It makes it nice and it's not um, going to limit it to just holiday. Because truthfully, you can use these clear glass balls in the summertime, uh, hanging off of trees in your backyard or, you know, anywhere. They're a lot of fun. And Mark is in here. Hello, my dear. He's in the other room, so <laughs> so there we go. All right, we're going to go, and I think I am going to use more of a, not a magenta. I'm going to go with a little bit more of a little bit warmer red. So just sort of maybe a combination. I'm not sure what kind of a red that is, but it's pretty much a slightly orangey red, but not super. I am going to water it down a bit so I can get some variations with my, with my painting. If you get water on the ferrule, that's that metal part on your brush, just wipe it off so you don't get drops of water unexpectedly. And now what I'm going to do is I, because this is much stronger color, I am going to make sure that it goes on more strongly in the areas where I want it to be shadowy. And leave spaces that are white, like right around the edges of the candy or right over the top. See how we get that feeling that it's bent over right there just by leaving that little white edge and we didn't have to put in any paint to make that happen. Inside here, I see this one needs to be darker. Now, when I say I see, I'm looking at this and imagining it in my mind because I've got the chat up in front of me. I don't have a reference for this candy in front of me anymore. I, I closed my, my photo. So, <laughs> yeah, you subscribe for art. Yeah, I, I love when people subscribe for the art. Subscribe to support the artist. That's another really good reason to subscribe because you want to support the artist. 
And it doesn't cost anything to subscribe to a channel. Make sure that you turn on your notification bells and turn on your notifications on your phone for YouTube in the YouTube app because YouTube will not notify you if you don't have your notifications turned on your phone in the app. See, I'm just putting those colors, that red down. I haven't really changed it. I haven't added anything to it. It's just variations of tone of that one color. So a little bit more water in it, a little less water in it, the brush drying out. Right now I'm just trying to get the color on. And I'm thinking about up here in this little area, it's going to be darker coming down underneath there. It might be darker right along the edge. There might be a little bit of light. It gives us that feeling that the ribbon is flowing. So watching it on your phone. Yeah, it's a little bit harder to hit the like button and things like that when you're on your phone because you have to close the chat go hit that like button and then come back into the chat. Or if you're watching it on your television, it's really hard to hit the like button. And that's when pulling it up on your phone is kind of good if you've got a phone that will do it. So that you can go in and, you know, subscribe to your um, subscribe to your creators that you like to watch. I know I keep talking about that right now. It's just my brain is sort of in that mode. Talk about that while I'm doing this. This and that. I'm just going to let that go dark right there. Right over here, there's going to be a little bit of light right on the top. There's a little bit of red. Doesn't that look Christmassy? That just, that just makes me makes me feel all Christmassy inside, knowing that ribbon candy. Um, I never really liked to eat it, but I always loved seeing it in the candy dish at Christmas. I mean, it's just sweet. Very, very, very rarely do they have like real flavor. Maybe there's peppermint ribbon candy or fruity flavored ribbon candies. I'm not really much for fruity flavors in candy. I like real fruit. Let's see, a little bit darker. I'm gonna leave a little shine right there. On that edge. This is our first layer with the red. I have not put the uh, well, thank you very much, Kung Fu Panda, that for hitting that like button, subscribing, clicking the bell. Awesome. Thank you. So now what I want to do is I'm going to take a, a tiny little bit of some Prussian blue and put that on here and grab some more of that red and see how that just made it a slightly, slightly darker version of the color that gives me a little bit more control with the shadow. This is one of those paintings where going in with a tiny brush is really making me happy. So where there's a shadow, where I would obviously see shadow. And this, remember, we are going to be putting highlights over this ball to make it feel like it is a clear glass. So we'll be making this into a clear glass ball, not just a circle drawn around the candy. All right. So getting in there, getting that. This is one of those mornings that I'm just feeling mornings. One of those days I'm just feeling pretty laid back and chill. I almost 
want to just not be talking, <laughs> which is really odd for me. I know I am a, I am a chatterbox usually. We're just putting the colors in. I'm going to, let's see, let's, let's look at that from the side, side view and see how that looks. See how that, that just feels like the ribbon is really laying there and is all, all just shining and shimmery and satiny. So that could be like a real ribbon, but it's candy. We're going to say it's candy. I like that. But looking at it from a slightly different angle sometimes gives you a better perspective. I do see in my green, I'm just going to take, take a little bit more of that green. This is the 42 colors water um, fan palette. You see my fan palette is not pretty and clean anymore. But I have fun and I am enjoying using these colors. Premixed colors make it so much more easy. And I'm going to grab just a different green to darken this up just a little bit. But using that same base. So I want to go in in a couple spots and make my green more shadowy. Just a few spots and that is really what you need to look at is what spots need a little more shadow like to the back edge of that area coming up to right where it breaks over right in here underneath where it's looped under easy e easy steps to make things look real thank you Catherine KM Crafts. I appreciate. And one of the things that people really need to understand and remember is that artists that do this for a living, you know, I'm, I'm teaching art for a living. So I practice, I practice a lot. And I've been practicing for many, many years. And so, because something comes easier to me than it might to you, is only because I have practiced for a long, long time. And if you practice, you will get better and it will be easier for you also. But it just doesn't feel easy when you're starting out. So I'm looking there and going, that's a little too bright. I'm just going to lightly brush across it. You build a visual vocabulary. You build a set of images in your head that grow into um, connected things. So because I know how highlights work on real, you know, real ribbon, I can extrapolate. I can put it into something different like the candy. I like that. That looks really good. I think I am going to start working on the wrapped candies and I, let's see here. We can, I'll go and find those wrapped candies. I just want to find, I'm just doing again, I'm just going to do a quick Google search wrapped candies or foil foil wrapped candies. So foil wrapped candy, and then I'm going to show it to you. So foil wrapped candies. Look at that. So that looks very similar. I'm just going to pop right back to here. See this type of candy we can look at references, look at references. References are there for you to get things to be more accurate. I'm not doing perfect accuracy on this. I'm not doing uh, realism as hyper realism, but I want it to 
feel like the candy could be real-ish. And so we're going to try and get some of those, you know, some of those highlights right there. See that really sharp highlight and then it's softer green and then it's really dark, but then it goes down and it's brighter again. That's because it's reflecting all around. I'm thinking we are going to look at doing purple or blue. I liked uh, this one. I like that one. And I, somewhere around here, I thought I printed it out just so that I have the reference. And you know what? Oh, there it is. <laughs> I will reach behind me. So I went ahead and this one I printed out, but it's not quite the right angle. The ones that show more of the circle are, are better. So I did print this out just so I have kind of a rough reference. But again, it's not a perfect reference. It is just giving me some highlights and some shadows. So I hope that helps. I hope that helps. And I hope that you guys are having fun. I am, you know, I saw that I had quite a few. Wow, we've got more likes than people in the room. That's, that's always interesting. <laughs> so now I want to take a larger brush and I am going to, oh, I did print out another one with some different colors just so I could kind of get an idea. And I like these little polka dots on this. So, and it's a little bit flatter. Maybe that pattern. Ooh, that looks like a sweater. Again, those are um, just for color and for reflection. Since my drawing was done way before I ever found those. <laughs> All right. So if anybody has any questions about the artwork, I would love to answer questions about artwork. I think I'm going to make one of these that really dark purpley, a purpley kind of tone. So we're going to start off with a very light purple with maybe a touch of magenta in it. So I'm getting a couple versions of that color. and quite a bit of water. So I wanna just get a base coat on here. I'm going to try and leave a few areas not painted in too much, especially on the wrapper. There will be edges where those highlights are and you might want to have a much softer reflection If you were interested in how I drew this, check out my 31, my 31 drawings video that I did. I did all 31 in one drawing session. Now I'm just dropping some of that same color, just dropping it on again. See how we start getting the reflection, take a little bit of that bit purplier, pinker. Hello, Mariana. Welcome. And Hillary, yay, you made it. Oh, I'm so glad. Doing these, because I've been going live every single day this month, this is day 19 in a row that is live. There will be a couple dropped videos next week during the holiday, during Christmas. So the 23rd, 24th, 25th, and 26th are going to be dropped videos. And I might switch one or two of them into, into actual um, premieres. So then we can just chat, hang out, if anybody's interested. You know, maybe the 23rd, I'll go in and just do a chat on a, during the video as a, as a premiere. 
what do you think? I haven't, I have not um, got them uploaded yet. I just took some of the straight darker purple now. And I'm going to put some of that softly into areas where I think it would be a little bit more shadowy. Again, this is not a super strong purple. This is the number 12 round by Mimic. And, oh well, I didn't record it on my phone. Ah, sometimes I get so excited to start a show, I don't get them, re I don't start the recording on my phone. I've been recording for Tanji in the uh, portrait direction. And it's so much easier if I do it on the phone. But I can I can get it off my, my computer. All right, I wanna take some of that Prussian blue and mix it into the purple. I need to get a darker shadow going. And that Prussian blue just works so nicely. Don't use black. Um, to make the shadow on the candy candy wrapper like this, it will turn your painting very dull and kind of lifeless. Get that sort of a shadow there. Darker shadow inside the edge of the wrapper. Little bits of little bits of highlights showing up here and there also still. And if you end up going over your highlights, you can always use white uh, gouache or white acrylic paint to go in after it's all dry. So doing the premiere sounds like fun. Yeah, I think, I think that would be a lot of fun. Maybe on the 23rd, we'll just do a, we'll do a premiere. That way I can have the, see if I do it as premieres, when I schedule it, I can have the thumbnail up with the actual finished painting. And you notice I have not gone in and dried this yet. I'm still working all of my colors into the wet but I'm working fairly dry with my paint, if that makes sense to you. Because neat thing is we're getting these things like it feels like the wrapper is crinkly and rolled up on itself and has shape. I love that this brush has this very fine tip so I can go in and get those, get those highlights and those shadows. You start with your lightest colors and you progressively work towards your darker tones. And if you do that, you will end up with a painting that has a lot of depth. That looks really good. I just realized that I missed the, the red part down here of that ribbon candy, but I'm not going to put it in until this is dry. So I'm going to move over here to this one and I think it is going to be, maybe it's going to be uh, yellow and gold or yellow and orange. I think this one's going to be kind of yellows and orange. So let's grab some, some yellow. Oh, and if you're interested, this is just a piece of corrugated plastic signboard. I have used this. I used it for all of the drawings. I've used it all month long. It does stain with watercolor eventually, but you know what? The staining doesn't bother me. And I do wash it off between paintings. I didn't get all the gouache off last time. <laughs> ah. So there we go. We're going to go in with this nice bright lemony yellow with a lot of water. So hopefully I can get it to be, it will be my highlighty color right next to the white. That it will be my, 
my most highlight, but I'm doing this so that I can have a basis of color to work on top of. Doing things that are shiny can sometimes be a little bit scary. It doesn't have to be scary, but sometimes it can be. But if you break it down and look at it and go, what's shiny, what's not? So see how there's pretty much an overall color of that yellow. And then it goes into oranges and even a little bit of brown in those folds and crinkles. And then I might go back in with my silver pen and do some of those little triangle details, I think. I kind of like that. And so if you are enjoying this, make sure and click that thumbs up. If you are new in here and you like what you see, please click that subscribe button. I'm going to grab a little bit of kind of a yellow orange. So this is kind of a yellowy orange color. And then maybe grab some a little bit more orangey orange. I'm just putting those colors right down here on. I like that better. Right on my my plastic board and I use it like a palette. So now I can go back. These are colors I know are in my painting. So if I pick up from here first, I know these colors are going to work. So I'm going to go ahead and just start putting a few shadows in. Yeah, chat is kind of quiet today. I don't know. Maybe everybody's painting. Are you painting along? I'm just putting in some shadowy color towards the back, maybe working a little bit into the that foil wrap or plastic wrapped area. Just starting to build those shadows and the highlights just start popping when you put the dark in. You need the dark colors or the darker colors to give you the place for the bright colors to shine. So the very back of those loops will be darker. Mesmerized. Ah, thank you, Mary. It's nice to know that the chat still works. <laughs> and you know, that's awesome. If you're using this as, you know, just a friendly, friendly voice in the background, welcome it's kind of nice i was talking to my husband about how back in the day when you could go into a coffee shop and sit and you know work on your own stuff but then people around you would be having conversations and even though you weren't part of their conversation you could hear their their entire conversation i'm going to pick up a little bit of that red and put it with that orange see by doing that, I'm still keeping with the colors that are in my painting. And then I can go like this and make a little more shadow. So that I think that's kind of what this is like. You've, you've got that conversation is going on around you. you. You're not really in the conversation, but it's nice because you know that there are people. There are other people out there. I like that. I, I like to listen to other people's videos. I'll just put videos on and let them run. I've been uh, somebody who's really good if you want to listen to because she's she's very down to earth, very, very, um, very focused on community. And that is um, Maradel Abrams from the uh, Mary Atelier, she, she goes off when she, and she goes live like three or four times a week at least. And sometimes two or three times a day, she goes live and she has these beautiful, um, 
mixed media arts and things like that. Catherine, that was somebody I was going to uh, recommend to you because a lot of her, her art is very reminiscent of things that you like to do. So Mary Atelier, and she'll go for long lives. You know, she does like four or five, six hour lives. And it's very nice just to have her on in the background as she's talking about what she's doing and chatting with the community. And yeah, I'm just, I'm just dropping color in. Wow. Isn't that fun? Now, something that would happen is a little bit of that purple would reflect up here, but it wouldn't be bright, would it? It wouldn't be a bright purple. So what I did is I took a little touch of that purple and I added it into my yellow orange to use in my shadow that's closest to that piece, of, to that other piece of candy. Look at that little touches of magic that happened. Actually, I like that shadow color. It's going to go down inside here. Purple being the complementary color to yellow or gold. It makes it a lovely shadow brown. Oh, I like that. Actually, I'm going to put a little bit of that over here. You can even take a touch of that across some of your brighter highlights and it just makes it feel like your, your plastic or your foil is really bent. Eating candy canes. Thank you, Marty. I, you know, being able to put the colors right here and show the colors being used because I used this red and this green in the ribbon candy. I used the this red and a violet purple here and some Prussian blue. I don't have a, a just a spot of Prussian blue laying here yet. I used it. Um, and then taking the purple into the yellow and orange that we mixed, we're getting a lovely lovely mixture of colors and not having to to go back and get a ton of colors see watercolor is so neat because you can do it in a very controlled way like this or you can do it big and splashy and I have not gotten comfortable yet with the really big and splashy I do a little bit of splashiness but not too much there we go. So just, I'm just dropping some of that darker color into places that would look deeper into the shadow. So I was looking at my, where, where people are coming from when they're watching my videos or where people are being recommended to go to after they watch my videos. And it's kind of fun seeing that some of the bigger watercolorists out there, I'm, I'm starting to get them as like my next recommendation after watching one of my videos, which means that the YouTube algorithm is starting to see that maybe this person does watercolor and fun illustration, you know? So that's, that's kind of my goal. I want YouTube to start noticing that I do watercolor and fun, calm, peaceful types of shows. There we go. All right, so this is dry enough over here. I'm going to go and put my, I need my little brush again. I'm gonna go in and take some of that shadowy red, trying not to get too much of that orange in it, and Get some red color down in here. And then there's a little white stripe next to it, but that white stripe is probably going to be more gray. If you have water on your ferrule or your brush, make sure, wipe it off. And I'm going to go ahead and just grab a touch of that darker red like we had used. 
so that I can make it more shadowy. You notice I put a lighter version of the color down, then I make it darker. And by doing that, I just picked up a little bit of Prussian blue to go into that red, de red there, make it really dark all the way in the back. So there we are. Oh, that is looking really pretty. Let's back up just a, just a second. Sometimes you need to back the artwork up so you can really get an idea. Let's see. Yeah, that's, that's feeling like it has presence, like it's in place. Now I need to figure out what I'm doing for the background. And I mean, I would love to go in and just put that green, the greenery stuff in there again, but then I'd have to work greenery around in the back. We could go with the snowy type of background. I, I'm still going to put a little bit of detail on the, on the foil, but I want to do the, I want to get the background going in now and get the ball, sort of the idea of the ball going in also. So the background, I'm going to, oh, looks like I've got a little bit of a yellowy green in my, my brush right now. Maybe it's going to be a warm glow in the background. Sometimes when you don't rinse out your brush, you get a color and you're like, oh no, what did I just do? Actually, it's not a bad thing sometimes. It might give you a direction to go. I think it is going to be kind of a green, give us a little bit of a green tone. I'm going to, now the big brushes, grab those water drops also. Even though I'm working on the outside, I am kind of crossing across onto the inside of the ball just to get it wet. I'm going to see what happens when we sort of drop a few colors. I want to keep the inside a little bit lighter, so I will probably blot. And I'm not being super concerned about making it perfectly right up to the edge of the candy. There we go. So right now we have just sort of this parchment paper look. Ooh. Hmm. Sweet treats, parchment paper. I don't know. I think I want it to be a little bit, I want it to be subdued. I don't want it to be a super, super bright. So maybe we will grab some of this, this really pretty green. It's kind of a green gold color. Um, I don't know what the, what the name of it would be that all of these colors are just numbers. So it's C20, C25 on this 42 color palette. Um, so I don't know, don't know what that color would be, but just getting it on here and maybe it's going to be those sort of longer spikier type of pine needles. Just sort of bringing them up and around kind of in the ball. And the background is wet, so this should blur out some. But I want to keep it sort of subdued, like I said. I want to keep them soft. I don't want them to be too, too bright. And I'm going to I'm going to soften this up in the middle of the in the middle of the ball. So 
the ones that I've got going inside, they're going to kind of become much lighter and it's not as bright as it looks. There, pick it up. I don't want them going across the actual candies, but I want them going up too. I want to leave some light show showing through in there. We're going to get, you know, some variations of tone. Um, or this could be sitting in beach grass. That could be, right? It's, it's really interesting. Christmas does not happen in the winter for everybody in the world. We have many people who, you know, half the world is in summer right now. I'm gonna dry this and we're gonna put another layer of color on. Actually, before I dry it, I'm going to go in and soften it so they get a little out of focus on the inside of the ball. And then I'm not going to put any more of that green background inside the ball. And then I'm going to blot it just to soften that up just a little bit. So we get it feeling like you're seeing through the glass. So right now we're already getting that feeling like we're seeing through the glass. All right, now I want to dry it. <laughs> oh. So yeah, this is, it's a lot of fun to just let it go, layer things up, explore your art, explore your creativity, and see what happens. I mean... I had no idea what my background was going to look like and where I'm going to go with it here. The paint is kind of dry right now on the, on the palette, on the edge, which is good because I just put my hand right into it. I'm going to grab some of that, that kind of greeny gold again, but now I'm going to go up and grab, yeah, that didn't change it much. I'm going to just get a little bit of the Prussian blue. Prussian blue into that green gold. And I still want to keep these light and sort of pine needle y. Right up on the tip. Let's see if we go sideways, if that'll be better. to figure out where I am. There I am. So right up on the very tip of the brush, see? Not, not pressing. I'm just barely touching that paper. I'm not going to go through the ball anymore, so I have to be aware what I'm doing, where my hand is. Putting some dark coming in. I'm going to have this pine branch sort of working its way out. Like maybe that ball is sitting on top of it. You know how in a tree when, when you decorate and the, the, you sort of squish the branches so that you can fit the favorite ball right in the front or right where you want it to be. And sometimes they rest on top of the 
on top of the branches. And I'm just building it up, kind of building it up with the negative colors or the negative, the shading is happening on as we're, as we're growing it. I'm going to get smaller and smaller areas with darker and darker. See how that's back here. I'm going to start filling some of those negative spaces with a little bit more, just smaller versions of that stroke, little, little strokes, putting it in darker, leaving some of those light areas. So that way we have highlights, we have shadows. bit more Prussian blue into that I think coming up down here I want it to to feel like those little shadows are deeper a few little ones out here I'm making this up as I go along so I don't have a reference and I'm just doing it as it feels right and sometimes it feels a little bit haphazard and out of, you know, it, it doesn't feel focused. And so I need to dry that area there before I put any more paint because I'm going to have to go really dark up there to get a little bit more focus. And I don't want Or maybe I'll put some Christmas lights. We can do that. You love the background? Yeah, it's kind of fun. It's definitely abstract pine tree. <laughs> I think is what we're what we're going for here. Letting the brush sort of do its thing. Part of doing it this way is giving it a framework around the ball here. Let me tip it up so you can see a little bit better. There we go. I need to dry it and add a little bit more. Hey, Linda, nice to see you. Yeah, um, Kristen, I, I really, I, I like the background too. It's just Sometimes you just have to work your way through and I need to stop messing with that area right there and dry and then we'll come back in. Everything pulls together when you put the highlights on the ball and when you put highlights into, you know, extra highlights on top. So if you didn't see the penguin last night, make sure and check that one out. It's in the playlist. I will be getting all of, I will be getting the I card put up right after the video for this one, which will have the playlist. All right. So my tape just came loose. That's okay. The heat of the heat tool will, um, will make your tape release. I'm going to back out just a little bit. Then it doesn't feel quite as, um, what am I trying to say? It doesn't feel quite as blown out when it's backed up. So I'm going to grab some of that Prussian blue, more of that Prussian blue, a bit of that green. See, I don't mind if I touch my palette with different colors. I'm going to keep it fairly dry. It's wet, but I'm going to keep it fairly dry. I want to say that there's maybe a few shadows showing up underneath of some of the branches, but not all of the branches or all of the needles. It's 
So yeah, I'm I'm gonna be here for a minute. <laughs> I'm I'm working this one out. You can definitely go with a much simpler background. I could have just splashed some green on here and said, "Poop tree, we're done." But I wanted I wanted these longer needles. I don't know. Again, like I said, it could be beach grass. We could be this could be hanging off of a um, a branch on the beach. I think I'm at the beach right now because of the penguin. <laughs> yeah, I did a really cute Australian fairy penguin with its uh, pink frosted donut floaty. Ready to go hop into the beach at sunset, hop into the uh, ocean at sunset. So Amy, how you doing? Did you have a, did you have lots and lots of fun? I know you had some fun, but did you have even more fun or did you, did you, um, after you got feeling a little better, did you have more fun last night? I hope it was a kind of a fun birthday party for you last night on, on the uh, chat. So if it's anybody's birthday, happy birthday to you. Let's see. I want a little bit of dark coming out right there. I think maybe there's going to be some fairy lights going on in here. I have a feeling fairy lights are going to happen. I want it much darker, right in the very corner. And then I think there's going to be some circles of gouache, very light, and then make some little light flashes going on around them. I want that a little bit darker right there behind it. You know, just just have fun. Just just play with it. See what happens. And remember, it's only paper and paint. So you can always, always start again. And if you've got the uh, downloadable book booklet from Teespring, The link is in the chat. The link is down below in the more information box. It has all 31 of the designs and you can print it off on whatever paper you want. See, there's some of the designs coming up. Oh, that's what we're doing. So here, let's do a little comparison where we started and where we are. Okay. We started with this very simple, basic outline drawing, right? And now with adding color and adding a background, you have much more detail. So just because I call something a coloring book, it's, or a print and color download, it's not just for coloring. It's for printing, using as reference so that you can make your own fun art. And okay, I'm, I've got a I'm really proud of this, guys. I got I got set two done of the tags. So you can use these for these for making tags or ornaments for your tree. It's another nine designs. The little penguin made it. So that's what the little penguin looks like with his donut floaty at the beach at sunset. These guys up here with different types of greenery, see, kind of like the greenery, but these are much thicker branches, thicker pine needles. Here's some of those fairy lights. 
And that's with the uh, water splatter background. There's some more bokeh lights. So we've got a lot of different techniques that we've been doing through this whole month. So lots of techniques, lots of things to, uh, to experience and to play with. Okay, that's even darker. Just a few of them. I'm gonna try and keep myself restrained. That's part of my problems. I get a little overexcited with some of these colors and just, I just keep going. I think it is beach grass. I think it is. It turned into beach grass. Like the beach grass that we have here in the Pacific Northwest, we've got lovely um, grassy beachy, beach type dunes. So this little ball is hanging out in the beach grass. That picnic on the beach in the dunes and then go down and safely on the beach have your bonfire in the sand away from the dunes. Nobody wants a fire in the dunes. There we go. Darken that up just a bit. Boom. Okay, so, yep, that's Oh, that's fun. And remember that this tape is going to come off and it's going to have a nice clean edge all the way around. <laughs> Celebrating a birthday a whole month. Oh yeah. Ask Mark. Ask my husband. My birthday is in May. So, and it's at the beginning of May, but my sister's birthday is at the end of April. And we always ended up celebrating our birthdays pretty much at the same time, especially as adults. We, we would celebrate our birthdays at the same time. And then her husband, his birthday is right in between ours. So we'd have a birthday party in April, which was my birthday party also. And then there would be my birthday two weeks later at the beginning of May. And we would have a fam, you know, just small us here in the house. And then Mother's Day would happen a couple, you know, a week and a half or two weeks later. So it was, the whole month was, was my month. You know, I get four weeks of, of celebrating. And it's a lot of fun. <laughs> what can I say? I enjoy that. I'm going to dry this. We do a whole week of celebration here. Uh, yeah. Mark doesn't get as much of a celebration because his birthday is in the middle of winter. And yeah, <laughs> we do. We try to combine because as we've gotten older, the, um, the thought of having three birthday cakes, well, and Catherine's birthday is in April also. But we did try when she was a kid to keep her birthday separate. And my son's birthday is at the beginning of December. So we used to not put any decorations up until after his birthday. Which was, you know, like two weeks after um, Thanksgiving usually. Or a week and a half to two weeks after Thanksgiving. So that was really hard. I would play Christmas music when he wasn't around. <laughs> Just because. I'm going to take a little bit of that darker green, I think, just a touch, really water it down. I'm going to put a touch of that on the inside so that the back of the ball feels like it's a little bit darker and farther back. But I'm not going to make it a hard, a hard line. And I am going to make this yeah, we didn't do any birthdays this year. I'm going to take some of that Prussian blue 
all by itself. So I'm just going to find a spot right here. And I'm going to take that Prussian blue. I will put just a tiny, tiny bit of green in it. I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to try something. I think I'll, I'll take a little bit of that brighter green. I'm going to see if I can make this, you know, those, the floats that the uh, fishermen use, there's glass floats. We find them on the beach here, uh, on the Oregon and Washington coast. You find these floats. I have a friend who actually, she's got a house at the beach here in Washington and she is like the luckiest, the luck. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Oh, that's working just like I, like I was hoping. She is the luckiest when it comes to finding glass floats. We were down on the beach. We didn't go all the way down this one day we mark and i we were there we were with our bikes and we didn't want to leave our bikes so we didn't go all the way down onto the beach right at the oh, right at the um the approach she came down we didn't know she was even at the beach that day she came down with her truck and her dogs and she pulled in and parked and went down onto the beach and no kidding like 10 minutes later came walking up and had a float that was probably a 10 inch glass float that she had found sitting on the beach. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Just, just that little, that little bit of that sort of bluey green makes it feel more like one of those ball floats. I've seen a few where they, uh, there's a glass blower at the Washington coast. And in the galleries there, they will, um, you know, have decorations for sale. And this person did these floats or did these glass balls that looked like the floats. And they usually have like a, a dimple on them, like where it was attached to the blowpipe because they blow the glass balls. It's like, oh, so cool. I am looking at this going... Time for that wimpy black <laughs> because it's very, very translucent. It makes a perfect color to put on the metal cap here at the top. You'll consider aging next year. <laughs> yeah, well. If you only age when you have a birthday, you know, I'm taking some of that green that I had, that darker green and using it as a shadow right here underneath of the cap, right here, there's going to be a bit of a shadow. I'm going to bring that darker line right around the outside just a bit. I'm going to have a bit of a shadow down here in the bottom. Make it even darker at the front edge of it. See these reflections here look like the grasses in the background. They look like reflections on that glass, don't they? Now we need just a bit of our white gouache for a couple touches of highlights. And I think even though we don't get them here, I might put a few little glows out here in the grass. We don't get uh, fireflies here, but I'm going to put a couple glowy kind of like fireflies in the in the grass so what I'm doing is I'm just going in and wiping out see how that's just very very lightly I'm not scrubbing the paper so I'm not pulling the anything up off the, pa the 
just the very top layer of the paint. go. Maybe one down here. And one all the way up there. So if you do something and you're like, oh, I didn't really, you know, I want to maybe enhance it a little bit. You notice what I'm doing here is I'm going off and I'm doing some other thing and letting this dry. Glass ball floats to hold their nets. Yes. Yeah, staying home rather than getting others potentially ill is is a very very kind thing to do it's very kind and very thoughtful you know knowing when knowing when we aren't feeling very good to that we're not going to go and get our loved ones sick i think is really good And especially if you are somebody who yourself might be immune compromised, you really don't want to, I'm going to, I'm going to glow this guy up. So we are going to take a touch of white wash and some yellow from the palette. We can zoom in on those. I think zoom it in just a bit. And I'm going to grab some of that lemony yellow. I need to get all of the green out of my brush. So lemony yellow. There we go. Lemony yellow and a little bit of gouache going to get a soft yellow and just start putting in sort of little concentric concentric circles. I'm not actually spiraling. I'm kind of putting, um, I'm doing like C's overlapping. So if you were doing it, you could bake that into a rose if you wanted to. I will put a brighter glow in the middle of it. Technique that I learned from the Art Sherpa and her um, acrylic paintings. For making glowies. See, because I was looking at that going, you know, those could have been puff balls too. Like, um, like dandelion puffs almost. I think I want to make that bigger glow. Maybe a little bit whiter. Oh yeah, see? Just add a little more white gouache to it. Neat thing about gouache, it is just opaque white watercolor. They put stuff in it to make it so it can be opaque and stand on top of your your darker colors. A little more yellow in that. Got a little bit too too white. Just bounce it around. We're getting a few little fireflies or magic fairy lights. Hello, Bonnie. Welcome. And then 
I'm going to grab more of that yellow into that white. And give it a yellowy. So I was watching a show and they were talking about there being, you know, different types of fireflies and how there's some bugs that are out there that mimic the glow of a firefly so that they can um, basically eat the uh, eat the fireflies <laughs> so they they eat the male fireflies by mimicking the glow of the females <laughs> it's really quite quite um, gruesome <laughs> But uh, yeah, I think maybe we'll maybe we'll do that. We'll put a little bit of the kind of a bright acidy green with the white. Maybe that's not a, maybe that's not enough color. Eh, I don't know. That's not that's not like bright enough for me. I may just have to have a white glow. Focus. There we go. Did I end up with six? Oh, I need one more. I need one more. <laughs> All right. Yeah, so welcome, guys. If you're here for the first time, I'm Stephanie from Deliberately Creative. This is a piece of art that we are painting that came out of my 31 days of cute and creative hand-drawn winter ornaments. The link is pinned at the top of the chat. If you were thinking about doing a uh, super chat, I'd rather you did something like buy the book as an instant download on Teespring because I get more of the profit. Amazon t or Amazon uh, YouTube takes a huge chunk of the profit where if when you do a super chat and this way you get something physical you get a downloadable you can use this to make all kinds of fun things but this is where we started and this is where we are so thank you for checking that out if you want to see how these were all made all drawn because I did draw all 31 designs in one show check out my 31 am I am I nuts marathon that I did on November 30th all right I need to put one more of those little glowies in because I only have I have six and I want seven so I think I'm gonna put one right out here And I am going to be doing another marathon on New Year's Eve. I'm going to get that scheduled here in the next few days. I need to come up with a really fun, a really fun thumbnail for it. A little brighter right there. There, now I've got seven glowies out here. That makes me feel better. Always odd numbers. Actually, it's always odd numbers until you get past about six, six or seven. Then it's so many that it's too much for your eye to count anyway in just a quick glance. But when I looked at it, I went, oh, that feels even. I need to, to odd it up just a little bit. Grabbing a little bit more of that yellow get more oh there we go more yellow just straight yellow right on top blow it up just touching it not worrying about making it perfect oh by putting the yellow on the green actually shows up a little better too cool all right i want to do the highlights on the actual ball. Let's see, can I find a spot of where I can put my white that's clean? 
I don't want to do a super harsh, strong highlight on here. So I'm kind of getting it really wet. I'm going to come along here where I've got some shadow and put a little bit of sparkle right around the edge. Just sort of dancing along the edge. I'm going to put a bit of sparkle coming across. Doing the, the highlight, very sheer, going over. Look at that. You end up with this beautiful, beautiful ball. I need a little bit of sparkle out here on the very edge. Maybe coming across. And I did say I was going to do some of those little, the silver on the inside, but I think there's enough going on in this painting that I really don't want to confuse the eye anymore. This is, this has got a lot going on. So you got yours? Yeah, thank you so much. All right, I am going to zoom out. We are going to take the tape off, move that board out of the way and see what it looks like all finished up. It makes such a difference when we pull the tape off and we have that beautiful clean edge. See, beautiful clean edge. And now I do see that I've got a little tiny bit that got onto, onto the paper. You can just take a little bit of white wash, put a couple little coats of white wash on that and it will just disappear. I'm not going to do that right now, but I am going to sign this, zoom in. There we go. We're going to sign this right inside the ball and I'm just putting my initials I have a little glyph that I like of my SB what do you think guys how'd we do do you like it do you like this little beach float ball full of candy at the you know, in the uh, dune grass. I'm pretty, pretty pleased actually how this turned out. So if you like this, click that like button, subscribe to the channel, share the video with your friends, make sure and check out the, I have set two and set one of my holiday tags now. So now you have 18 ornaments or tags to put onto packages. Make sure to check out the video that I did the 31 cute and creative designs on. I did paint on the actual original artwork. So the artwork that was drawn during the marathon is what I'm painting on. Tomorrow we are going to be doing hearth and the hearth the hearth we're doing is this sweet wood stove inside the the ball I'm thinking maybe we're going to do some type of a patterned wallpaper for the background what do you think patterned wallpaper for the background let me know <laughs> and remember noon sunday set your set your notifications just go in set your reminder this is already scheduled and ready to be reminded of catherine's getting ideas catherine gets ideas and her ideas are like lots of fun check out km crafts my moderator today she is uh, my niece and has a wonderful and fun channel. We're working on getting her to a thousand subscribers. She's at over 900 now. So 
Let's keep getting her more subscribers for her fun arts and crafts. And thank you so much for being here, sharing your time with me. I really appreciate it. And remember to go out and do something creative. Take care of yourself so you can take care of those around you. I want to see you back here again tomorrow at 12 noon Pacific time.